Hi guys, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So I recently did a video called Playing the Worst Tier 6s, and I had a lot of comments on that, and I want to address that first. First and foremost, it wasn't my opinion that they were the worst tanks. It was purely based on the stats from Blitz Stars, not my personal view. So in that video I was saying, you know, this tank's quite a good tank. It's not my p opinion that they're the worst tanks. In many cases, I don't think they are terrible tanks. It's just that Blitz Stars is recording that these tanks are truly terrible. So with that in mind, I'm now going to look at Tier 7, and I'm going to play the worst tanks in Tier 7. And we're going to go through why the community is finding them pretty bad. Again, this isn't based on my opinion. This isn't my view that I think this is the worst tank. This is purely based upon the data that Blitzstars is holding. So I'm only looking at the tanks that Blitzstars have as terrible win rate. Again, I'm not picking any premium tanks or any collectors. Now tier seven is a pretty weird tier because, well, two things. Firstly, we've got tanks like the Annihilator and the Smasher in the tier which, bless them, don't really help some of the tanks in that tier. Not only that, but the 9 times out of 10, the chances of being up-tiered to face off against tier 8 is pretty high. And tier 8 have some really, really amazing tanks. You know, think of the Object 252U, think of the Action X, etc, etc. And you start to get a picture here. Yes, when tier 7 tanks face off against their own, Nine times out of ten, they can they they can handle that. Although the annihilator and the smasher comes into play, tier seven tanks, a vast majority of tier seven tanks, are only really comfortable when they're facing tier six and tier seven. They really don't like facing off against smashers and annihilators, and they certainly, in a lot of respects, don't like facing off against tier eight. So with that in mind, we're going to look at blitz stars. And we're going to see, well, we're going to start with the light tanks. We're going to look at the light tanks, then we're going to go to medium tank, then heavy, and then TD. So looking at the light tank. So here's the data for the light tanks. And top of the list is the American Tech Tree light tank, the M41 Bulldog. You can see that after 528 battles, there's only a 48.13% win rate. That is slightly worse than the AMX 1375, which has a 48.16% win rate. When you then start looking at the damage per battle, the Walker Bulldog is only churning out about 766, significantly less than that of the AMX. We then look at the, the hit rate, and again, it's struggling with the likes of the AMX. It has a better hit rate than the LTTB, however, but its survival rate is pretty poor only a 23% survival rate. So what is it about this little light tank sitting in the American tech tree? Well, this is the Walker Bulldog. Now, when you, if you have it, remember, cast your mind back, or if you've seen the tier six uh, video, then you'll know that top of the list there is also an American light tank. And the thing about the American light tanks are they have absolutely zero armor. It, it's th that straightforward. They aren't exactly the quickest out there, although they are pretty nifty. And they, they do struggle with their guns, especially on the penetration side. So what is it about this tank? Well, let's jump into its uh, statistics to find out. Now, as you can see straight away, it's got it's got reasonable hit points, 1,166. It's a light tank, remember that. So, you know, it's, it's not gonna have a vast amount of hit points. But you start to see the issue with this tank when you start looking at the armor. 25 millimeters on the front of the turret. 25 millimeters on the front of the hull. Now, that is paper. I mean, don't forget, this thing is gonna be facing smashers and smashes with a lovely HE round. It's just going to absolutely annihilate this thing. The sides of the turret is 25, the rear of the turret is 25. So the entire turret is only 25 millimeters. The front and sides of the hull are 25 millimeters with the rear being 19. I mean, this thing is just a paper bag. It's as simple as that. 
It's got pretty decent view range. I mean, this is, it's 290, but I've got all the equipment attached. Concealment, it, it's not brilliant. It's, it's okay, but it's not the best. I mean, 49 when stationary, 49 when moving. I mean, the 49 when moving is very, very good. You'd expect it to be slightly higher when stationary and 11 upon firing. DPM is very nice, 2,651 per minute. Now, that only, however, look, there's, there's a common misnomer about DPM. DPM is if you land every shot, okay, and you fire them in quick succession without waiting. Every shot lands, every shot pens, and every shot does your eye end alpha. It, it, it's what the tank can do, not what the tank will do. And there's a common misunderstanding about DPM. So remember that, it's what the ca tank can do, not what it will do. The reload time is 3.62 seconds, which is beautiful. That's an amazing reload time. Penetration, 168. This is where the little bulldog starts to struggle, especially against those, those bigger tier eights. The, uh, the heat is 231, that's a vast improvement. High explosive is 42. Average damage, well, you're knocking out 160 on your APCR and 135 on your heat with 200 on your HE. Again, these are bad figures, but when you consider some of the tanks it goes up against, you can start to see why some players are struggling with this. Aim time, 3.4 seconds. That is a bit lengthy for a tank of this sort. Dispersion's not too bad. It's not the best, 0 0.308. Gun depression, 10 degrees downwards, 20 degrees upwards. Maneuverability, well, top speed is 72, which is very nice, but the average speed is around 43. Thing is, it can go backwards very, very nicely, and it has pretty good terrain crossing. So, we start to understand here why this tank is causing so many problems to the community because you know it's a light tank it, it's it's pretty fast but it does take some time to get up to that top speed but the main problem with it is its complete lack of armor and its lack of penetration what is it actually like to play though well let's jump into a game and find out this is me in the m41 bulldog rolling out on castilla the thing about castilla is it's got some good areas for this little tank to sort of maneuver around thing is this is a tier 8 game so i was in no illusions going into this that we were going to have a hard time because i'm realistically going to struggle against a lot of those tanks because as I said, this tank does struggle to an extent with its penetration, whereas the tanks that it's facing won't struggle. I mean, they will slice through th this tank like a hot knife through melted butter. Now, when you consider that metaphor, I mean, then you start to get a picture of why the community is struggling in this tank. The thing about it is you've got to be careful. Now, look at this. I mean, that, that does nothing. The penetration, the velocity of the tank is just not doing anything to that Shinera. And you've got no choice but to run away. And this is what you need to do, guys. You cannot face off against these big brutes in Tier 8 or those brutes of the Smasher or Annihilator in this tank. You are just going to get absolutely pasted. Now the thing, it, the thing about this tank is it does have a pretty accurate gun and when you use that accuracy you can start doing things like this to that shark. Now the shark if you look is basically a big red tomato and I'm really struggling to find those areas to pen. I'm hitting the cupola and I'm hitting its weak spots. As I said, everybody, every man and his dog will pen you and there you go, the Shamira comes down and puts a big roll into me. Now look, I could face off against the J2, but there's no point. I could face off against the Chimera, but there's no point. I may as well continue my little push round because I can see that there's an AMX down in the dip who's gonna pop back up again in a minute. And this is where the Bulldog really does start to shine. Load that HE and you're going to have a bit of fun. I mean, that's a tier eight heavy. Frontally is a nightmare for this tank, but with the HE penetration and with the damage that the HE dishes out, this is where the tank, like the Bulldog, really starts to shine. Now the thing is, you've got to get yourself into these positions. If you're not in these positions, then where you can do this, 
then you've got to be very, very mindful of this tank's weaknesses. The weaknesses we've already explained, it's a paper bag with a gun on, and it's a pew-pew gun at that. So what are the strengths? Well, the strengths are its mobility, it's got pretty decent gun depression, and it's got a pretty accurate gun. So try to spot if you can, then just get out of dodge. Keep this tank mobile. Seriously, do not, you know, try and brawl in this thing, especially if you're in a tier seven, tier eight game. In a tier six game, they're still gonna pen you, but at least you've got a fighting chance with those tanks. And as I say, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be facing these big tier eights. And look at this, I cannot pen the 53 CP. All I can do is track him. However, we do 2,336 damage there, mainly because we managed to catch that AMX off guard. And you've got to try and maneuver your tank to these kind of positions. If you can't do that, then you know, you've got to be kind of sniping. But you've then got to remember that the shower velocity on this tank isn't great. It's not brilliant. And rolling out into, in this tank against tier 8s, you are going to have a tough time. Which means you need to adapt your own game plan and your own style of play. Because if you don't, then you're not going to be long for the battle. It's, it's as simple as that. It's just not designed to be a frontline tank. It's designed to get in there, get those early spots, turn around and run away and keep mobile. Take the shot, move. Take the shot, move. Find a position where you can put those shots across in ambush. That is what you can really do with this type of tank. The tank itself is not as bad as everybody makes out. But the problem is that when the players are rushing into these tanks, they are misunderstanding its role. And when you misunderstand its role, and then you misunderstand the parameters of the tank, it's going to lead down the road to a truly terrible win rate. Now, the thing is, there are better tanks in the tier. I mean, you've got the likes of the T-71, which is another American light tank. And that is also paper thin. And it's a re auto loader. But I love that tank because that tank is just, that, that tank is an ambush machine. You roll in, you get the spot, you turn around, you run away, you sit at the back, you go pop, pop, pop. And it doesn't struggle as much as this one. You've also got the OTTB. Uh, you've got the, the likes of the Type 62. Okay, that's a premium tank. The Kunze Panzer, another premium tank. And the M41D, all premium tanks. But the biggest problem with the lights in this tier is the fact that it's coming up against annihilators in smashes who love to smash and annihilate these paper thin tanks and it's going to come up against tier eights which will always make these tanks kind of struggle so that is the worst tier seven light tank according to blitz stars let's now have a look at the worst medium tank Jumping into the mediums here now in tier seven, and Blitzstars is telling us that the T20 is by far the worst tier seven medium tank. It has a win rate of only 46.89%. I mean, that is shockingly low. That's up to 361 battles. It has a damage per battle of 826. Again, that is really, really low. Admittedly, it's... Um, its survival rate, it's 27.53, is actually better than the Panther and uh, the Panther M10, which is pretty nice. Its hit rate is also better than the Panther M10, but the Pan and, and the Type 5 Chiri. The thing is, this is another American tech tree tank that absolutely struggles against tier eights and smashes and annihilators. Tanks it will face off against. So what is it about this particular tank? I mean, you can see it's small and dainty. Well, it's not, strictly speaking, not really a medium. It's more like a light medium. And you've got to play it more like a light medium. Now, we'll see that once we jump in to have a look at its statistics. So here we go. It's got 1,325 hit points. That is slightly better than that of the light tank of the M41 Bulldog. But again, you can start seeing where the problems of the T20 lie, and it's in its armor. On the turret, the front is only 85 millimeters. Again, tier eights, smashers, and annihilators, just going to sort of go through that without breaking a sweat. 
the hull at the front is only 64. So this is a haul down tank because if you stick that hull out in the open, every man and his dog is going to pen you every day of the week and twice on Sundays without batting an eyelid. Sides of the turret and the rears of the turret are 60. The sides of the hull and the rear of the turret are 51 and 38 respectively. This is another paper thin American tank. View range is actually slightly better than that of its light tank counterpart. It's 298. Okay, I've got the equipment loaded to increase that, but staggers belief, yeah? The T20, the T20 also has better concealment or while well, stationary. Remember, the M41 Bulldog was 49. This is 51, but, but it does struggle when moving. Again, the Bulldog is 49 when moving. This is only 44, but it does have better camera profile admittedly only by one when it fires. Bulldog at 11, this has got 12. DPM is lower than that of the Bulldog. This time it's only 1,937. It has a reload time that is longer than the Bulldog at 6.97. Penetration, same as the Bulldog, 168 on its standard ammunition. Lower because it doesn't have heat lower than the Bulldog on its APCR premium ammunition and the I explosive is 50. Damage however is much nicer. 225 on its standard ammunition, 190 on its APCR and 270 on its HE. These are significant improvements over that of the M41 Bulldog. Aim time, well near as damn it the same as the Bulldog, 3.5. Dispersion is slightly worse, 0 0.349. You can see here that the depression and the elevation, the depression is the same, 10 degrees, and the elevation is 25. Speed, well, this one is pretty nifty. Fast forwards, it goes 56. Reverse, pretty nice at 20. Less than the Bulldog, admittedly, but it's okay, with an average speed of 37. And it has pretty decent terrain crossing ability. So, with that in mind, why are players struggling so much in this tank well again it is no different to the problems that we saw with the m41 bulldog it is a tank that just has no armor this tank like the bulldog also suffers with penetration issues however unlike the bulldog at least it's dishing out that damage once you manage to get those penetrating shots again the biggest problem with this tank is that it's facing very, very nasty tanks in its own tier, smashers, annihilators, blah, blah, blah. But also, it's facing off against those big, big tanks in tier 8. Now look, when it faces off against T6s, it's not too bad. It's okay, it's manageable, it's a beautiful little tank. And when it faces off tanks in its own tier that aren't smashers and annihilators, again, this is a tank that can really hold its own. But it does struggle when it faces the bigger ones. So let's jump into a game and let's find out what the tank is like to play here i am on halas now like i said in the sort of build up to this you've really got to play this tank more like a light tank rather than a medium if you play this tank like a medium tank then you are going to really get unstuck you've got to remember this tank has got absolutely no armor again this is another tier 8 battle it has got a very accurate gun, but it does struggle with that penetration, especially against these tier eights. So you've got to know your maps on this tank. You've got to understand the positions you can take this tank to in order to make the most use out of it. The thing about this one is like the Bulldog, you've got to keep it relatively mobile. You've got to search for those shots and you've got to do it tentatively you go rushing headlong into the fray with this thing and you're going to be back in the garage sooner than you expect it especially when you're in tier eight battles in tier sixes it, like i said it can kind of hold its own but when you're looking at tier eight games like this one it becomes a bit a bit more of a struggle so know your maps guys know where you can put the tank know where you can find those little undulations to get this tank slightly hauled down and to use that 10 degrees of gun depression just like I'm doing here 
And this is how you gain a profit more when playing tanks like this. Now look, it doesn't struggle to pen those tier 7s like the SU-152 there. Now if that would have been an ISU-152, different kettle of fish, because that armour gets slightly more thicker. Now, I get a little bit lucky here, this is sort of free damage, but I'm not the only one focusing on him, so you know, I'm just getting free damage. But again, you've seen that we've moved around the map, we're trying to get those flanking positions, we're trying to stay at all times pretty much all down. Where that shot went, anybody's guess. But, you know, that should have just gone straight into his tracks. But there we go. So once you actually do hit the tanks with this little gun, then you are going to knock out some decent damage. And, you know, if you're looking at tier 8, don't look for those frontal shots because you're just not going to get them to pen. You've got to look for those side and rear shots. And to do that means you've got to get around the side or around the back of them. That's why this tank has mobility. That's why this tank has gun depression. It has these things for a reason. And that reason is you're not meant to be out in the open taking pot shots at these bigger tanks because you're just going to get wasted. Play to the weaknesses of the tank, okay? The weaknesses of this tank is paper thin armor. Once you understand how paper thin that is, once you understand that it does struggle with its penetration, then you can play to its strengths. And its strengths are mobility, gun accuracy, and the ability to go haul down. Now that's not a bad game. I mean, we got a third class there. So it goes to show how many people are struggling in this tank. Because that's a third class after 1,427, no kills. And it's no surprise that, Pete, that this tank has got a win rate of 46%. Because people are just not viewing the tank correctly. They're playing it incorrectly. And when you play it incorrectly, you're just going to get mullered. Now, the thing is, as I say, this tank really does struggle in Tier 8 games and against Smashers and Annihilators. So, when you've got a tank this weak, if you have a team that is equally weak, facing off against a team that is very strong, both in the tanks that it has and the players then you are going to find some struggles, to be perfectly honest with you. Best you can do in that scenario is just farm damage as much as you can. Okay, you, 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 That's all you can do, guys. Look for the positives rather than the negatives. So that's the light tank. That's the medium tank. What about the heavy tank? So jumping back into Blitz Stars, this time to look at the heavy tanks. Top of the list is the IS-2, the Chinese heavy tank at tier 7. After 193 battles, this one has a 48.62% win rate. Pretty bad. I mean, even the Yo, which everybody hates at tier 7, is better. It has a deep a damage per battle of only 985, which considering it has a big gun, is pretty low. It only has a survival rate of 31.93. Admittedly, that is better than the AMX M4 but the AMX M4 has a better win rate. So what is it about this tank? Well, one of the problems with this tank you can see there is the hit rate. Okay, it's better than the KV-3. Don't know why it's better than the KV-3. I mean, the KV-3's got a pretty decent gun, but the hit rate on this one is 78%. So people are struggling with that. Personally, yes, the gun handling isn't the best. I mean, it could be better. Chinese gunners are not renowned for being amazing but why is the community struggling with this tank because they really are if it's only got a 48 percent win rate so let's jump into its statistics and let's have a look at it this tank has got 1484 hit points and that's marginally better than the t20 we've just seen which is a medium tank Front armor, well, on the front of the turret, it's 140. On the hull, it's 125. That's very nice. The sides and the rear, uh, the sides of the turret, however, and the hull are very weak, 1994 respectively. Same goes for the turret and the hull. For the rear, it's 1962. View range, 271. It's a heavy tank. Concealment, well, it's got a really bad camera profile. 37 whilst stationary, 30 while moving, and 8 whilst stationary. D 
DPM 1995, which isn't that shabby for a heavy tank. Reload time, however, is 8.42 seconds, and that's where a lot of people begin to struggle. The other reason why people begin to struggle is, again, this is a tier 7, and that penetration of 168 just isn't cutting it as much as it should do against those tier 8s. APCR is slightly better, 247, HE 55. Average damage, however, is pretty nice. 280 on its standard, 240 on its premium, and 350 on its HE. Aim time, this is where this tank starts to really suffer. 5.2 seconds. I mean, that is an age. You waiting for that reticle to come down before you shoot seems to take an eternity. Five seconds may not sound like much, but believe me, it's a long time. Dispersion, 0.38. Now, that is pretty big as well. I mean, don't think you're going to be sat at the back sniping with this thing. The other problem that this tank has is gun depression. Only six degrees. I mean, it's a heavy tank. It's a Chinese heavy tank, admittedly, from the Russian line. And, you know, these tanks are notorious for very bad gun depression. So this isn't a tank that is realistically a haul down ridge line monster. It can do it, but six degrees, it's not the best, as you can imagine. Maneuverability, well, it's a heavy tank. Forward, it's going 34. Reverse, it's going 14 with an average speed of 30. Terrain crossing is not that bad, but again, it's a heavy tank. So what is this tank like to actually play in a game? And where is the community struggling in playing this thing? Why is the community struggling with this particular tank? Well, again, it's because it sits in Tier 7 and it will face off against Tier 8s and the likes of Smashers and Annihilators, who are pretty heavily armoured. The problem that everybody suffers in this tank is the gun handling. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not a big fan of the gun handling on this tank, and it really does take some getting used to, because that 5.2 second aim time feels like an eternity it also struggles with penetration as you can see there against the object 252u i mean that was side on and it just didn't do anything because it went through those boxes and that just takes the velocity out of the ammunition which is really annoying however when it's facing off against the tanks in its own tier tier 7 it's manageable when it's facing off against tier 6s which it will do i mean it'll cut through them like butter it just struggles a lot with those tier 8s. And that, coupled with its horrendous aim time of 5.2 seconds, is what creates the problems with this tank. Now look, to play this tank effectively, you really can't put it on the front line. Although, you know, we get a good shot there into the smash it. You really can't play it front line. You've got to play it like a heavy um more like a second line support especially if you are in a tier 8 battle because you just haven't got the the the, the the ability or the luxury of time for the waiting for that reticle to come down now unless you're up close and personal to the tank whereby the dispersion is not going to really hurt then you know that's a different kettle of fish like here we're up close and personal i don't need to wait for the aim time I don't really need to worry about the dispersion. I've got a big, big open reticle and a big, big smasher to hit the side of. The one benefit of this tank is that, I mean, why he tried to hit me there like that is beyond me. Should have gone for his HE. I don't think he did. He went for his AP and that's where he came on stuck. Doesn't struggle in a situation like that. Doesn't really struggle with its mobility. It is a heavy, so it's meant to be pretty slow. So, you know, it's not that that's causing the problem. When I look at the Blitzstar stats, it's the damage per battle that is letting this tank down. And that is because the players rolling out in this tank, majority of them, are not playing the tank to that, that weakness. And that weakness is that aim time. And they're just firing you know, before that reticle comes down. And with the dispersion being so large, the chances of you not hitting a weak spot significantly increase. So the trick to playing this tank is if you're not up close in personal, 
you need to be in a position whereby you can poke around the corner, wait for that reticle to come right down, aim onto those weak spots, and then you'll have much better success in this tank. I mean, I get lucky here with this snapshot. It was a good clutch shot there, but the T-49 was close enough for me to do that. Now, look, I'm not setting the world on fire there with only, you know, 1,641 damage. Now, I did have better damage games than that, but that one's a second class because we blocked some damage from the Smasher, we get three kills, and, you know, we have a relatively good game in it. As you can see there, my toonmate knocked out 2,425. Now, the thing is, my toonmate, Ephelup, is a pro. He can make this tank sing. And not all of the people in the community, you know, can do that. Most of us are just average players. And as an average player, we have to play the tank more conservatively. Now, look, if it's tier six, you're happy as Larry. You're going to have fun. Most tier sixes are going to struggle to pen you. You're not going to struggle with them. And you're going to have a whale of a time. Thing is, nine times out of ten, especially in my case, I go out in tier seven, tier eight games in this tank. And that changes the game completely because it's much harder to hit those tier hates and get that penetrating shot, especially with that huge aim time. So guys, play this one more like a heavier, especially in those tier seven, tier eight battles. Stick behind your bigger heavies get to a position whereby you can really be safe waiting for that reticle to come down and then make sure you are fully aimed before you push that button if you can do that you will start to have better fun but again like everything it a lot of it is team dependent you need a team that's going to support you and therein lies some of the problems that you face in this tier anyway we've done all those now it's time for the TD. Jumping back into Blitz Stars, you can see hands down that the worst TD is that of the AMX AC Mail 46 with a 46.96% win rate. It's marginally worse than the Stur Emil. Again, damage per battle, this one's only knocking out 879, and there's a reason for that, which we'll get to when we look at the video. The hit rate is actually better than the Stir Emil, but its survival rate is significantly worse. So what is it about this particular tank, and why is this tank struggling? Well, I mean, here it is. This is what it looks like. And as you can see, it's got these massive two cupolas on the top. It isn't the most mobile of TDs, and it really does need team support. Without the team support, it's an absolute mare. Let's jump into its statistics and have a look at those. So, hit points has got 1,166. That's sort of comparable to the T, to, to the, 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 the Walker Bulldog. Armor, frontally, pretty, pretty solid, 120. But it does have those observation in those two cupolas, which sort of are easily penetrable, and everybody aims for them. The side and the rear are paper thin. I mean, 40 mil. You show your side on this thing, or anybody gets around the back of you. You know, it's good night, Vienna. View range, 250. Really small. Even with all your equipment loaded to increase your view range, 250 is not good. Camo profile, well, it's not too bad. Stationary, 57. Moving, 40. Upon firing, 16. I mean, that's better than the Bulldog. It's better than the T20. I mean, that is a lovely camo profile. DPM, 2,600. So if the DPM is 2,600, why is the damage per battle, you know, only 800 and something? Well, you will see. Penetration, pretty nice. 212 on its standard ammunition. 268 on its APCR and 55 on its HE. Average damage. 310 on its standard, 260 on the APCR, 350 on the HE. Aim time, not too shabby, 3.2. Dispersion, pretty nice, 0 0.289. Gun depression, not bad, 10 degrees. Elevation, 15. And it's got a, a turn, left turn, 7, and right, 10. I mean, that's not big. <clears throat> Speed, again, okay, not too shabby. 50 going forwards, 12 going backwards, 35 average. And terrain crossing ability, well, it's not brilliant, but it's okay. 
So with all that, why is this tank so bad? Why is everybody struggling? Well, like all tier sevens, it's because it faces smashers who love to put HE rounds into this thing, annihilators, and of course, the dreaded tier eights. Now look, if you're in a battle, okay, and it's a tier eight battle, and on the other team they've got either a Scorpion G or an SU-130 PF, this thing is like a bullet magnet. And that's one of the problems with it. It really does need support. You know, even if you sit at the back, it needs support. This tank really thrives on support. But enough about looking at that. Let's have a look how it plays in a game. Now, I'm not a fan of this tank. I find it absolutely horrendous to play, to be honest with you. It is probably one of the most difficult tanks in the game, in my opinion. And that's not just because Blitzstars is saying it's pretty pants. I also really find this tank unbelievably difficult to play. So let's have a look at it. Let's see what it's actually like. Here we are in Molinjek in the little AMX. And the problem with this tank is trying to find a position whereby it can be effective and it's relatively safe. Now we're in a tier seven, tier six game here. And that suits this tank. When it's in a tier eight game, it really does struggle. It struggles massively. Now, I have to admit, I don't know why the Breton Panther is sat here camping in the TD spot, but hey, he's a Breton Panther. Like I said, what you need with this tank is pretty good support and a pretty decent team around you. Why? Because its spotting ability is pretty, pretty poor. So you need that spot. Once you've got those, then, you know, once you're facing tier 7s and tier 6s, like I am here, then... No, the tank actually isn't that bad. The penetration is nice, the reload is nice, and the amount of damage it dishes out is very nice. I'm still pretty miffed with the Breton Panther, by the way, in this game. He is a medium tank, you know, he's got, you know, he's pretty decent, so why is he hanging around at the back? Don't know. Anyway, we've knocked out some damage here, we've taken a kill, and, you know, we're bouncing quite a bit. Now, I'm going to struggle here, because... Something big has just smacked me with an HE route on the side. And therein lies your problem with this tank. Things will smack you. And it was the Jag Panther that smacked me. I'm still very upset with the Breton Panther who sat at the back of the map and I'm dead. And therein lies your problem. Okay. If you don't have the tanks supporting you, I mean, why are you sat at the back? Don't know. But if you don't have the tank supporting you, you are going to struggle. Now, thankfully, you know, I've got a decent tune mate in the form of Ephalump, who is very forward here in his Tiger P, and he will carry the game. <clears throat> now, look, I always find this when I'm driving this tank, that I always have teams that just don't want to perform, okay? And you always have players like that Breton Panther, who is still, by the way, camping at the back. I'll just show you. He hasn't moved from his perch. And he's not AFK. He's not AFK. He's just camping at the back. He's got all his hit points. And he's just, well, done nothing really. And that's the thing about this tank. Because it's so paper thin. Now, had we have had the support there from our medium tank, who was meant to be supporting we wouldn't have died in that position we would have been okay actually i think it was the kv2 that smacked me with the hr with the he rather than the other tank and you know this this game would have gone a lot differently had that player uh, done his job he didn't do his job now the reason i'm showing you this replay is this because you know it's a win and i get pretty decent damage out of it and do a lot of blocks there i had another replay where the survivability was it was a bit better we still die because, you know, you only need a light tank to rush you, get round your side or your back, and then you're doomed. And this is why the survivability of this tank is only 25%. I mean, it is shockingly low, because it is shockingly bad. So, that's why this tank is so, so terrible. 
You can't do what I just did, which is effectively frontline the damn thing. You've got to stay at the back. But in that map, on that scenario, one of the problems you're always going to find with the AMX is where to stick it. And therein lies your problem. Where are you going to stick it? And look at that. I do better than the Breton Panther. Shocker. And this is what I'm saying about these tanks. You need the team around you. Without the team doing their role and their job, you will struggle in this tank. Because you will. Simple fact of life. So you've got to have a relatively clued up team around you. And you've got to have a relatively clueless enemy also. Because the tank is just so terrible. Now, when I did this, I did I played all these on the stream, and we had a shocking time, myself and Ephelim in the AMX AC46, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, I only got a couple of good games out of it. Ephelim was tuning with me in the AC at one stage, and he gave up because it's just so terrible to play. Now, the thing about Tier 7, as I really can't overemphasize enough, is that when they face off against tier 8s, smashes and annihilators, that is where these tanks become unstuck. You've got to be very careful. And in order to be very careful, you need to understand the maps. Oh, I can't say this enough. In it, you know, it's trying to get home to the newer player base out there. Take your time to understand the maps. If you understand the maps and you understand the tank, Trust me, that's half the battle. You will start to play better and you will start to have more success on the battlefield, so to speak. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been a look at the worst tanks in Tier 7, according to Blitz Stars, and why they're so bad. By all means, comment and everything below. And until the next time, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking, because at the end of the day, that is what it's all about having fun and being happy.